This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. According to an article in the San Francisco Chronicle, cheerful and happy people resist diseases better than glum and unhappy ones, thus establishing the principle that the surly bird catches the germ. And according to an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association, Dr. Claude E. Forkner, professor of clinical medicine at Cornell University Medical College, says, very often we do not know what it is that brings about the recovery of a patient, but I am sure that faith is often a most important factor. Dr. Elmer Hess, past president of the American Medical Association, wrote, The doctor has to be a man with firm convictions concerning a creator. I do not care his denomination, so long as he believes in a power greater than all the instruments of medicine at his command. Dr. Salvatore Cutolo of New York's Bellevue Hospital, when a paralyzed patient asked him how she could go on with her life, said, I told her not to lose faith in herself or her faith in God, because religion is medicine. Religion and medical science are by no means irreconcilable. In fact, they are quite compatible. This is a subject which I have researched and studied for decades. Dr. René Dubois, professor at Rockefeller University, has written, medicine will not become fully scientific until it has come to grips with the problems of emotional disturbances, as well as with the mechanisms of the faith which is necessary for healing. A medicine based exclusively on the body-machine concept of human nature will soon be as obsolete, he writes, as the equipment of the horse and buggy doctor and the gold-headed cane of the 19th century physician. Dr. Granger E. Westberg, professor at the University of Chicago Medical School, wrote that religion can have either a positive or a negative role in the healing process, and that a faith that is, quote, open, reality-centered, and constructive, creates health-engendering attitudes. Religion can be a crucial factor in combating illness and attaining health, end of quote. Time magazine recently reported, everyone knows about the old Kaiser who lives to be 100 and cavalierly attributes his longevity to booze, black cigars, and beautiful women, and never to religion. But according to Dr. George W. Comstock of Johns Hopkins School of Hygiene and Public Health, that sort of impious longevity may be the exception, not the rule. Dr. Comstock has found that religious practice and the clean living, which usually goes with it, appears to help people avoid a whole series of dire ailments and disasters, among them heart disease, cirrhosis of the liver, tuberculosis, cancer of the cervix, chronic bronchitis, fatal one-car accidents, and suicides. The most significant finding was that religious men and women have far less arteriosclerotic heart disease than others. This scientist humorously calls this the Leo de Rocher syndrome, because nice guys, he said, do finish last. Faith is not only good for your soul, good for your attitude and your spiritual life, but good for your body and your physical health as well. On one occasion, you read that Jesus was on a boat crossing a lake. He came to his own town, and there some people arrived, bringing him a paralytic lying flat on his bed. When Jesus saw the faith of those who brought him, he said to the paralytic, cheer up, because your sins are are forgiven. At once, some of the scribes thought to themselves, this man is blaspheming. But Jesus realized what they were thinking and said to them, why must you have such evil thoughts in your mind? Do you think it's easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? Get up, he said to the paralytic. Pick up your bed and go home. And the man got to his feet and he went home. When the crowd saw what had happened, they were filled with awe. They praised God for giving such power. Faith touches and transforms all of life, body, mind, and spirit. Authentic religion can change you wonderfully. It can take an utterly selfish individual, the sort of person who likes to have his cake and eat yours too, and change that person, regenerate that man or woman with the knowledge that he or she is a son or daughter of the living God. To know you're loved by God, that you have an eternal life in your eternal future, knowing that you can learn to live in faith and be not anxious. These are health-promoting practices. Dr. Richard H. Hoffman of New York states that civilization's three greatest killers are not heart disease, cancer, and accidents, but calendars, telephones, and clocks. Calendars ever reminding of deadline dates, telephones jangling the nerves to fatigue, and clocks inciting the urge to hurry. Another doctor said, 
two things that are bad for your heart are running upstairs and running down people. Resolve to live in peace and in love and in joy. These are at the heart of the spiritual life. It's good to be alive. Celebrate your very existence as a gift of God and praise and worship God for that gift. For God's very essence is love and life and light. Dr. Alfred J. Cantor, M.D., director of the American Academy of Psychosomatic Medicine, has written, Our chronological age is simply a matter of the amount of time which has passed since we were born. Aging begins at birth, and curiously enough, we age more rapidly in our early years than we do in the middle years of life. The rate of aging slows as we pass infancy. In every living body, there is a process called anabolism, a rebuilding process, and the force of catabolism, a tearing down or destructive process. These forces act normally in each of us in every cell of our bodies. Ultimately, the forces of catabolism overcome those of anabolism and the organism dies. However, aging can be postponed to some extent and even reversed. Physiological age refers to the functional capacity of your tissues. A man may be 60 years old chronologically and yet have the body of a 40-year-old person. Or the converse may be true. Obviously, physiological age is far more important than chronological age. Mental age is determined by intelligence tests of various types. It has been found the mental age of the average American is approximately 13. Television programs are geared to a 13 to 16-year level of mentality. Emotional age is more difficult to measure, although there are psychological tests for that purpose. If the average mental age is indeed between 13 and 16, it is reasonable to expect the average emotional age falls within that same range. But one does well to remember the scriptural saying, a little child shall lead them. For indeed, it seems that the best emotional and spiritual level for rejuvenation is a child's level of trust and faith, writes Dr. Cantor. It is my firm opinion that one of the truly important elements in maintaining physiological youth, despite chronological passage of time, is the maintenance of the emotional and spiritual attitudes of childhood. Then there is spiritual age. He said, I've already spoken about that in a sense. If we retain the child's complete faith, we are spiritually of age. A deep belief and faith in a benign God, a partnership with that God has a remarkable therapeutic value, this doctor writes. Conversely, when we begin to dissect religion, worry about the attributes of God, surround our religion with excessive formalism and institutions, we weaken it in proportion to the extent of the dissections. Faith must be a deep, profound, and unquestioning experience, undissected. Simple, direct spiritual knowledge can be a potent force in the control of aging. Equally important is a change of attitude. The use of affirmative thinking is valuable. This enlists the aid of the subconscious mind, which in turn acts upon the entire body through the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is intimately connected with the endocrine glands. And the hormones produced by these glands are exceedingly important to maintaining normal body tone and preventing premature aging. The very realization that aging can be thus postponed and premature aging reversed brings new hope. And this hope of rejuvenation actually speeds the process. Hope and faith are two major ingredients in physical therapy. When people have a strong and unwavering spiritual basis, miracles can indeed be wrought. End of quote. Those were the words of an eminent medical doctor, Professor Alfred Cantor. Faith in God can bring new health and joy into your life, but negative emotions can thoroughly disrupt you. Jesus spoke sharply of anger. He knew how devastating it could be. One optometrist said, Anger narrows the field of vision and shuts off peripheral vision. So it is dangerous to drive when you're angry because you cannot see things which are not in the direct line of a narrowed vision. So when someone says, He made me so mad I couldn't see, that is a physiological fact. Another ophthalmologist said, he simply would not examine the eyes of a person who had just been angry because everything is all out of focus. A recent legal study indicates about 90% of all the murders committed in the United States every year are committed in anger. There's an old Greek legend about a man who killed himself with his anger. His fellow citizens had raised a statue to a man who was a celebrated victor in the Greek Olympic Games. 
but so strong was the feeling of anger and envy which this incited in the breast of one of the hero's rivals that he went out every night in order, if possible, to destroy that monument. And after repeated efforts, he moved it from its pedestal, but in so doing it fell, and in its fall it crushed him to death. Negative emotions are incredibly destructive, but the power of love and the peace of God can eradicate them. There have been scientific studies on the effects of negative emotions. The speech research department of Kenyon College has proved through tests that when the average person is shouted at, he or she simply cannot help shouting back. You can use this scientific knowledge to help keep another person from becoming angry. You can control the other person's tone of voice by your tone of voice, it has been found. Psychology has proved that if you will keep your voice soft, you will not become as angry. Psychology has accepted as scientific the old scriptural injunction, a soft answer turns away wrath. The antidote to anger is spiritual patience, love, joy. The antidote to all negative emotions is in your faith in God, your inner life, your spiritual life, living as the son or daughter of God you were born to be, living as a child of God, knowing you're loved, knowing you have a place in this universe, that every other person of whatever race and coloration, whatever background, is a brother or sister in God's great family. Most people live in fear, they're afraid of death, and they're also afraid of life. And thus they live wedged between two terrible fears, frightened both by the present and by the future, both by existence and by the thought of its termination. Their only consolation, then, is in the past, in recalling memory. But their only possession, your only possession, is the present, the here and the now. Your only hope is hope itself, a rebirth of your faith within your soul, the valiant boldness to dare to claim this sonship or daughterhood with God of which I have spoken, yielding your present life, your future death, all of your eternity, everything you are and all you ever hope to be to the wise and wondrous will of the universal Father, the God who loves you. Commit your life to God's care and keeping. And all things, all things will become as new for you. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.